ready. Welcome to episode 38 of the Go Get Em Agility podcast. My name is Margaret Hughes, and I'm in England with my daughter, Emma. <laughs> Say hi, Emma. Oh, hi, everybody. <laughs> and we are at, where do we at? Dog Sports Derby. Uh, agility. Uh, Iconics Agility Trial. Yeah. In Derby. In Derby. <laughs> Derbyshire. Uh, Derby. We're somewhere in England. We're in mid-England. <laughs> We're somewhere between, I don't know, Birmingham and Manchester. And we're at Derby Dog Sports. Dog Sports Derby. And wow, are we ever wowed. Yeah. Right? Yeah. We are watching, I believe it's level four, five, six, and seven. Yeah, four, four through seven. Yes. Um, and so far we've watched 20s and 24s. Yeah, I haven't seen any little dogs yet. Not yet. I've seen them around. They're here. They're just, they haven't run yet. Yes. And we are blown away. We are on the floor. On the floor, blown away. By... I actually started yelling. There was a dog that did a beautiful running contact and I was like, ah, and everybody like turned around and looked at us. <laughs> Stop uh, embarrassing me. I know. I know. We are the, most likely the only Americans here and it's probably very obvious. Yeah, we're t- kind of trying to stay to ourselves, but I think we stick out like sore thumbs. Yeah. Well, uh, you keep videoing people, so that's I do. why. <laughs> I do. I do keep videoing people. I'm. I, so they had a, a a broad jump, tunnel, tunnel, under the one tunnel under the dog walk. So tunnel, tunnel, weave, pull, entry that was so wicked fast. Yeah. And you either got it. Or you didn't. Yeah. <laughs> and when you didn't, you really didn't. Yeah. Um, and the I would say, of all the dogs that I watched, I would say the, the weave pull entry alone was running close to 65, 70% correct. Yeah, I would say so. There's yeah. more correct than incorrect, I would On say. On the weave pull entry, yeah. for sure. There's a lot of mistakes. So one, one of the biggest takeaways that I've gotten so far is that at this level, I'm pretty sure we're watching... Uh, a seven. Well, you know, but I or before J7. before we make all these assumptions. But I was thinking this was my idea was that you know in the U.S. I drag you to all these IFC cups, right? Um, and a lot of times the judges are IFC people themselves, and so uh, like Ashley Deacon. Um, there's a lot of others that are uh, wandering around Washington. Thomas. Uh, yes. Um, and there's kind of the same crew there, right? There's a crew of very talented people, not including myself in there, but like, you know, there's, there's you know, Jordan Biggs and her little crew are very That's talented right. people. Yeah. Um, and I was wondering if it was, we've just stumbled upon that crew, but in England, uh-huh. right? So maybe not every single person in the UK that does so agility. So let's just do a couple of name drops. Shall we? Okay. Dan Shaw. Dan Shaw. Oh my gosh. Incredible agility run incredible yeah, amazing I, I don't know what his dog's name is but no. man that was it was a 24 inch jumper right yes wicked run uh wicked good <laughs> really yeah. good nora uh, i forget her last name I, I don't i don't know but her dog's name was lemon yes oh. she's got she's got fruit names for her dogs i, I like think it. lemon and banana I um, then who else we saw some eojers yeah so we saw some junior handlers a lot running. of a lot of young people here I would say yeah. about half or under the age of 30. Yeah. And then yeah. Uh, another name drop, uh, Dave Munnings yeah. is here. Yeah. Uh, who else did we see? We've seen a few people. Uh, I, I, I'm not really... Oh, that... Shannon Springfield, uh, who oh. was an ex eoj who won EOJ uh, back in the day uh, before the 20s of, you know, 2020, 2021. Okay. Uh, but I believe she has also been on EO. Uh, don't quote me on that, but I believe that she has. Okay. Yeah. And then Neil Ellis is the, uh, judge. the judge. Yeah. Well, that yeah. was my point about the judge, right? Because he's obviously a very prominent figure in international agility. So I was wondering if that's just the crowd that follows him around, right? So right. maybe it's Neil and not, not English that. agility or British agility. Oh, as so a you're whole. saying we're at a high level agility show? Is what yes. You, we managed to find yes. a high level. That's what Possibly. I'm saying. Or is this their daily weekend? <laughs> Right, they're like, oh, we'll just, we'll just have these giant running contacts. Oh, every single dog here has running contacts. I think I well, saw two. No. I just counted two. Yeah, that it, had stopped. Minimal, minimal number have stopped. And it was the same handler that had stopped. So oh. she had multiple dogs, but it was the same handler. Oh, really? I didn't realize that. Yes. Okay. I, yeah. Um. So yeah. So yeah. It could be. Um. 
kind of a one-off weekend. We don't really know. Mm -mm. But if it is their daily weekend tri type trial type caliber of um, running. I don't the, know how the, the US one does well. <laughs> These guys are <laughs> The one takeaway that I have gotten from watching a good chunk of the morning is it is they are all in or nothing. Right. You win or you die trying. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So they're either going for it or they're eliminating. Yeah. And the minute that they do eliminate, they go into training mode. Yeah, they do. Yeah. They. I, I don't know that I've seen one that hasn't gone back at least once when they've eliminated and tried to repeat the yeah. problem. Yeah, they fix to, it, don't they? Yeah. And then some, some go on, um, but... I mean, they try it, right? Yeah. And then they, if they get it, great. If they don't, then they they go ahead and go on. Um, the other takeaway, and you mentioned this right out of the gate, is how gentle and kind they are to their dogs. Oh, they're so kind. They yeah. are. Yeah, there's, um, I don't know who it was. Somebody, it was a teeter um, to a straight backside. And there was two jumps right next to each other. So either jump could have been the Literally backside. Literally six feet away from yeah, each other. Yeah, from, from the, the dog's point of view. And um, I forget who it was. I think it was Dalton. Um, I don't know. But somebody, a uh, very high profile uh, runner, he, his dog did not get it. And his dog did not get it about three times. He tried three times. And each time he was like, oh, no, 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 no. Come here. Come here. Come here. It's okay. It's okay. Set back up. I'll pet you on the head. You know, you're a very good dog. The dog was wagging its tail the oh, entire time. Yeah. And I just, I, I mean, I'm not saying that people who are loud are bad handlers. Because I've been loud a few times when I run. But I'm saying there's none of this, no, bad dog. Yeah, like, you know? gosh dang it. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. Get back, get back. Yeah. No, they're very super, quiet handlers. Very quiet handlers. Yeah. I can barely hear them. And they are working at a distance that is phenomenal. Yeah. So, yeah, I'm pretty amazed at how quiet they are. Um, it's a small trial mm -hmm. as far as there's only one ring. Yeah. So there's one ring. It's huge, but, it, well, it's it's long. Yeah. It's kind of skinny. I, I don't know exactly what the dimensions. We're at uh, Derby. Um, Derby Sports, Dog Sports. Yeah. Something like that. And it's, it's I think it's got to be at least 120 feet. Yeah, it's quite long, isn't But it? I think that it's only about 70 feet wide. Maybe 80 feet wide. I'd say it's pretty... It's not 100. It's kind of like our backyard, I would say. Our backyard's that's, a little bit longer. That's useless information well, to if people you're, on if the you're, internet. <laughs> if you are, go get an agility. Um, no, but I... Um, yeah, it's, it's similar skinny. to my... It's similar to our training field where it's long and skinny. Yes. That, that is our... Ours, ours isn't quite as no. long. Hey, you but, know what they... Oh, sorry. Continue on. Uh, well, no, I was just going to say that... that um, they're running really big courses, but it's long and skidding. Yes. Yeah. But they go back and forth and they go back oh and forth. Oh my gosh, do they forth. ever. Um, the other thing is the number of slices. Oh, there was so, been five or six. Was that the jumpers course we yeah, were watching? Yeah. There were a ton of slices. And everybody, I, I thought this was very and interesting. treadle slices. Well, I thought that. this was interesting because you actually made me think about this. Um, there was a time in, in the first course in which it was, you know, a jump or they were coming out of the weave poles or something. And the next obstacle was a slice. So you could either take that as a backside or an in and in. And there was multiple times in which the dog and the handler would do an in and in slice and they would come around the wing together and the dogs and the handlers were moving at such a speed where you thought oh, they're never going to get this right the dog is moving too fast the handler is not there to shape it but they would get it they yeah. would get it and uh, a lot of verbal a lot of verbal stuff but i'm i was thinking uh, uh this is i don't mean this to be like mean to anybody but you know this when you're at a jump and you stop and you put your hand around right you do like a force front or something yeah i think if you tried to do a force front here you'd fall on your face <laughs> i really do i think that you just you couldn't well, get up there unless you were like the fastest person alive that's what well, you yeah the second part of that sentence you wouldn't get up there yeah yeah so you may not fall physically i think but you, you're gonna you fall either. back you're yeah. gonna fall back way behind your dog if you have a force front so it's all backside or in and ends with just the hand and the verbal right there's the no verbal. other cross body motion whatsoever yeah which is so a lot of uh, opposing motion training it looks like yes right you go that way i'm going this way yeah um 
Yeah, what else were your takeaways? Um, I think we already mentioned this, but the lack of stop contacts. And yeah. it wasn't running contacts like, um, uh, oh, yeah, that was good. That was a running contact. Every single dog sped up on the dog walk. Every single mm-hmm. one was like, oh, I know what this is. And they flew. Yeah, you could see them stride change. Yeah, they did a the little hop, skip, and a jump on the top, right. didn't they? It was like watching Jessica Zhu and Hallelujah, but like every single person was like that. Yeah. That's what it was like. Yeah. And so, you know, when you when you go to the U.S., and I'm not saying that the U.S. is terrible at agility, because we're not. We're obviously not. We've done very, very well on the international stage, both juniors and uh, senior people. But... but We're spread out. We are. So when you, when you go yeah. to a show, in my opinion, where we go, there are clear winners, right? So you, if you have a nice run, you're going to say, oh, that dog will win. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, and it could be anybody. But here, all the running, all the clean runs were within, must have been milliseconds of each other. Right. They were flying. Everybody was flying. Well, Every single dog. Right. It's like taking, it's like taking the U.S. Open, mm-hmm. all the, all the podium pe- people from U.S. Open and putting them at your local trial. Every single one. Yeah. Every, yeah. Every single handler was impressive. Yes. Yeah. Every single and one. And I don't know all their names, but I'm telling you, there is a high caliber of training that's going on here. Even. That we're not touching. And even like. On a big scale in the U.S. Yeah. And even like young people, like people maybe age 20 and under. So there are a few kids here. Uh, you know, they were up with the adults. Oh, I mean, they could beat the adults. They it were was, booking it. They were running. Yeah. yeah. And it's just crazy to me to There's, watch that. I've only seen one handler that has not been a mover. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And she had clear distance skills. Yeah. Her I mean, dog, she must her have dog sent was her, awesome. She must have sent her dog from what? A hundred or I'd say little, 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 50 yards to, away? To that weed pull entrance? Yeah. So she was on the first tunnel. As her dog, probably mid first tunnel, when yeah, her dog hit the weed pulling. You'd have to look at the. It's really hard to explain over, uh, uh, you know, audio because it was tunnel, tunnel. But both of those tunnels were how many? How many well, feet? at least those, fifteen to twenty. So that that's straight. Straight. Tunnels. One was slightly curved into the corner. Yeah. So the weed poles were in the corner. Yeah. And, and she like a, it she, went down like a. Um, yeah, but I'm not. I don't mind that. I'm trying to give people an idea of how far away she was. Oh. She okay, was so, like in. She was in one corner of the ring, go. and her dog was in the other. I mean, it was incredible. <laughs> pretty, pretty dang close. Yeah. Yeah. She was in the middle of the arena. Literally, the dog was in the corner. Yeah. Like, corner, corner. Like, a foot away from the corner. Right. Yeah. So, let's say that's 20 feet of tunnel, 20 feet to the weave pole. So, there's 40 feet minimum. Yeah. You have and to then, get in the middle there, too. And though. then I would say the, the other tunnel is 20 feet. So, you're 60 feet yeah. minimum to that weave pole. And she couldn't have helped her dog if she wanted to because she was trapped behind a dog walk. That's true. She was behind a dog walk. So, yeah. she couldn't have gone. And right. then she did that. And then off the weave poles, it was a backside wrap. Mm-hmm. And she nailed it. Yeah. And a lot of a lot of handlers weren't nailing that. No, that was hard for a lot the, of people. Yeah, they were they were struggling with that backside wrap. Yeah. The ones that got um, on the other side of the weed poles and did just a normal backside, they they handled they, they did that better. That was the nice. dog understood it better. I think so. Than the wrap. We should post pictures of the of the uh, course for people if they wanted to see. Oh yeah, because yeah. well, it's a crazy course. I don't know if I can get them. I don't. I haven't seen course maps. Oh well, we could probably write, draw it down. You have your little app. I'm not going to draw it. No, oh, I'm not okay. drawing this map. <laughs> okay, forget that, Emma. <laughs> okay. Uh, so, so I just want to touch back and go back to this all or nothing um, handling that they're doing. This they're, is what I've been doing. This is what I've been preaching to you for 15 years. Okay, but there is a high, <laughs> high. There's a high, high level of NQ. Oh yeah, I'd say. I think I've seen one in three. No, higher than no, that. No, I mean, oh, yeah. Okay, I'd say, what, 20 dog class, three got a Q. Yes. Yeah. 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 I think it's a very low percentage of Qs. Um, an off course is an elimination, though. Yes. Whereas in, in our venues, for some of our venues, an off course is just an off course. Yeah. It's not an elimination. And the classes were of all Border Collies. I think there was a pointer... A lab and a, a melanois. He- and a healer mix. Yeah. But all border collies. Yeah. Border collie, border collie, border collie. I want to. Yeah, but I... we have, we've only watched the 20s and 24s so far. Yeah, we'll see how the mediums pan yeah, out. Yeah, we should probably head back in there. Yeah. 
we might do a part two. Yeah, we're very excited about this. <laughs> right, oh, oh, so just two other uh, side notes. One, the judge does a ton of work. Oh my gosh, he's, he's running up and down. He's bar setting. He's course building. Yeah. He's, uh, yeah, he's, constant. The judge is up and down, up and down. Did you see he jumps when the dogs jump? Yes. It's he's, very, it's very cute. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then their toilets are very nice. Oh, they do have good toilets. They have yeah. good, these are porta potties. Yeah. Mind you, these are porta potties, but they look like permanent porta potties, and they are nice. Mm. Hot water, running like proper hot water. Oh, and tea. They have tea here too. Oh yeah, sure. I went to go get a coffee, and it was hot water for tea. <laughs> for tea. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we're gonna go watch the mediums now, mediums and smalls. Yes. And exciting. maybe we'll report back. Maybe not. This might be our last podcast on this. Yeah. But we've had a ton of fun. This has been very exciting. I'm very excited to be doing this with you, Em. Oh, I wish Dot was here. Goodness. All right. All right, we're doing part two. Yes. Electric Boogaloo. Exactly. Of our Derby Dog Sports podcast. Yes. All right. So we went back in <laughs> and we found out a couple of things. Uh, number one, it, it never got warmer. No, it was very cold. It actually got colder. We were cold the entire day. And it went from our toes all the way up our legs. Yeah. And and we were okay dressed, but definitely cold inside the building and out. All right. But no, the bigger thing was that we learned that, well, I think we already knew this. We are watching grades four through seven combined. Yes. So these were not individual um, where you could win your class grade four, grade five. You couldn't win your grade class. Yeah. But you could win... Everything. Everything. Yeah. Um, and so the fours running with the fives, running with the six, running with the seven. It's like novice, open, excellent masters all running together on the same course. Correct. Yeah. Yeah, like, so I guess you would say time to beat. Right. But difficult course. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that uh, is very hard. <laughs> okay, one thing that we definitely loved, no table. Oh, it was so cool. It was no so table. fast. So is that a, I don't know. Somebody will have to tell me if that's across the kettle club spectrum. Or was that a special thing for today because it was a combined... I'm pretty sure it's across the Kennel Club, Kennel Club spectrum, but don't quote me on that. Okay, so we, um, I pulled one spectator aside and I said, can you answer some questions for me? And he was very uh, kind to answer some questions. Let's see if I can remember Yeah, I remember one of my questions. Earlier in the podcast, I had asked, is this just a special group of people who like to push themselves or is this what every single handler in England looks like? Right. So local everyday local trial versus right. A, a, international a, style people, right? Yeah. People, you know, jockeying for EO. Right. And the answer was that these were people who wanted to go to EO. Um, not everybody in the UK or in Europe handles like these people, uh, looks at courses like these people. Um, it looked to be kind of just like a uh, one-off course. Uh, the judge, uh, Neil Ellis, he was also judging um, tryouts, if I remember correctly, for Great Britain. No, he's a judge next year. Or is he a judge for EO? Yeah. Okay. I think for EO. Anyway, I'm, they I'm wanted just to be like under his courses and kind of get a practice of what he likes to do as a judge. Um, and so that was really interesting to find out um, because I think that if I had been a novice American agility person and you shoved me into that room, I would have wet myself. <laughs> so it's good to know that this is not what the UK sees as agility. Um, I loved it. I think agility should be like it all the time. But I also understand that so I I'm, like uh, to be mean so to courses and I like I like weird stuff. So. so you're saying it was a little above most novice people's pay grade. I would say it was like if you were in on a Formula One track in my Beetle and they were like, okay, now you have to beat Lewis Hamilton. <laughs> and I'd be like, oh, well, I have a Beetle. And they'd be like, okay, and? So, yeah. <laughs> oh, man. Um, I, one of my, uh, the other thing that we learned is Oh, that it was only large dogs. Oh, yes. That was interesting. Yeah. So we thought we were going to go in and watch the mediums and smalls, but we didn't. We went back in and it was large again. Yeah. It was round. So we watched. There were three rounds, I think. Well, there was jumpers, agility, and then did. Yeah. And then finals. Yeah. I don't know how many rounds they ran, but they definitely ran jumpers. They definitely ran agility. 
also called our standard course. Yeah. And then they had a finals agility. Right. Yeah. And it was amazing. They're really, really nice handlers. I, I got some incredible, like, chills on some. No, Nora. Nora with Lemon. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Um, uh, Stephanie Best. Dan Shaw. Yeah. He had an incredible run. Yeah. And- Stephanie Best with Believe. Oh, my goodness. What a dog. And I think that was a grade five dog. Yeah, I think you might have been right. It was so grade not a- five or grade six. It was not a grade seven. Um, yeah, really incredible dog uh, uh, ran. Um, who else? You're Shannon. Oh, Shannon Springfield. Uh, Spring for, uh, Springfield. Uh, she was on the um, EOJ teams for Great Britain back in the day. The juniors. Uh, yes, the junior teams. I believe she's also been on the adult teams. I might have already said that. Oh, she had a um, beautiful but run. She was incredible with both dogs clean. Right. Um, yeah, they were layering the teeter. And then some were also layering the dog wall or the A-frame. Yeah, and it was like oh. a... Just incredible huge stretch. Yeah, space. The, the dog walk ran down the middle of the, the run basically. And the first half of the run, it took you from the one side of the dog walk to the other through a tunnel that ran underneath it. And then right into the teeter. Yeah. And so some ran it on the uh, layered the dog walk, some ran it, um, they blinded before the teeter. Uh, and, and both, I saw both being successful. Yes. So yeah. both, both ways were successful. And then yours, your, the junior handler uh, layered the, she was on the other side of the dog walk when she layered a tunnel. She layered, she layered a tunnel, an A-frame, and another tunnel. Yeah. And, and she flipped her dog out of the weed poles the opposite direction. Yes. So she, her dog yeah. was in the weed poles. She was on the right side. She flipped her dog left, tunnel. A frame tunnel back to her. Yeah, she was and very her good. Timing w- could not have been better. Really, really beautiful run. Uh, what else? Did, so, is that all we learned? Um, I learned that it's very rare for them to do rear crosses. There were a few rear crosses on were. on um, long lines. So, if it was a long line of jumps uh, that was coming to the end or coming to a collection point, uh, they would do it. But there was no rear crosses, you know, those wide sweeping rear crosses that we tend to see right. in AKC courses. There was none of that. I mean, no, was, I mean, these were distance rears. Yeah. I mean, they, I mean, they were rears that you could not do unless you had verbals. Right. Yeah. And they were, they were rear uh, wraps. They were threadle wraps. So it was sending the dog yeah, to the back I side. Even ta- I wouldn't even class that as a rear. But you it know? technically I'd class, is. I'd class it as I. I'm talking about like, um, like and when a people- traditional jump, jump, rear, rear cross. Yeah, yeah. I saw a few rear cross the straight tunnel, but it never worked, did it? Yeah, they struggled to get to the third jump out or yeah. the second jump out. Yeah, no. Anybody who rear crossed the tunnel on the line, it went tunnel. I mean, literally straight tunnel jump, uh, threadle wrap. Yeah. Um, they struggle unless they had a really good distance threadle wrap. They struggled with the threadle wrap. Yeah. Um, we saw one injury. We did see yeah. one injury. Um, but I think and, that might have just been, you know, I don't yeah, think that the, it's commonplace no, the, in the, the UK. The the amount of extension to collection was phenomenal. I mean, you could literally hear their claws scraping up the uh yeah. and they the were turf. on they were on um on turf yes on turf the exact same turf as we have in uh the new new run wild facility yes on um, the exact same turf and the dogs i saw one dog slip but i don't even think that was the turf i mean no. i think it was just the way that he landed right um and uh and then one injury and they were two separate dogs um yeah God, it was just a phenomenal was, day. It really was. It was. Uh, it, it, it was, was inspiring. Yeah, it was almost. It, it was the kind of uh, you know when you're watching like a baseball game or a football game and they're in like the final quarter and you're like, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, are they gonna win? Are they gonna win? Are they? It was like that with every single run, right? So you're just kind of like high on adrenaline on every single run, and it's actually yeah. quite tiring. 
um, because it's just such high stakes. Uh, when the dog, you know, if a dog does eat, it actually like moves you physically. You're like, oh, you're like hanging, oh, I on, got, hanging yeah. onto the fence, like, oh my god. Right. Yeah, I got um, goosebumps on some of these. You know rounds. what I found interesting, and I don't know if this is. I don't want to make a generalization about American judges because I love our American judges. I think we have brilliant, brilliant, brilliant judges in the AKC. But, and also, I feel like this was a local trial, so maybe everybody knew each other. But I thought that the judge had more of a uh, repertoire, if you will, with um, his people. So, like, when people would um, have a brilliant, brilliant run and they would cue, he would, you know do his little whistle, he'd do a little cheer, he'd do a little dance, he'd clap, he'd be like, yeah! Right. Um, and I don't think that you would do that in the U.S. I've never seen a judge do that. Well, there was, a, it was a huge uh, NQ rate. Yeah, massive. Right? I'd it, say like 80%. Yeah, there, very, very, very few dogs qualified or went clear, what, yeah. whatever they call it. Um, and so, yeah, the judge definitely got excited when they, when they went clear. Yeah. As did the other people. I mean, yeah. the, the spectators were all clapping when, when somebody went clear. So, But that was pretty rare. Yeah, yeah. A lot of people came close. Yeah. There were a lot of just one-offs. Yeah, there's a lot of, you know, just a refusal, right? Something that would get you on the podium if everybody in front of you fell. Uh, I thought it was interesting that they had music on the whole day. They did. Uh, which was cool. I was like, yeah, this is cool. This is nice. Uh, I like music. Yeah. Um, the we've, I've heard a little bit of music here and there at the odd American trial. The other thing that is different, completely different to our local trials anyway, is that the entire one side of the arena was see-through fencing. Yeah. Uh, but it was just, what would you call it? Um, metal, metal, metal. It was yeah. like a metal fence and you could stick your foot through it. Yeah, there's a border call or border pap that we met and she was like, Oh yeah, he's just figured out that he knows how to put his head through the through the bars and we were like, What? And the dog just like shoves his head through the bars into the uh, into the ring and he's right. like, Oh my god, are we gonna do agility? Yeah, and there's all dogs on the edge, there's all people on the edge, there are yeah. kids on the edge. Yeah. I mean people so, hanging over, eating stuff, right? Yeah, videoing. Um yeah, dogs tugging on the sidelines. Yeah, there was dogs tugging at the end. Uh, you know, when they finished a run, they'd start tugging. And uh, the weave poles had just happened to be right in smack dab in that exit gate. And there wasn't even a gate. It was just an exit line. Right. And so dogs would be tugging. And then the dog, you know, uh, behind them would be in the weave poles staring straight at the dog tugging. Um, and nobody batted an eye. Nobody went after anybody. It was all good. No. It was impressive. 99% of the dogs came to the line without a leash on. Yeah. I would right. say so. I, I'm very, I, the, the, the lacking of ring crew was amazing to me. I think there's one. Yeah. <laughs> it was like, she was, she did great. I don't know what she was doing. If she, was she was scribing, scribing. Yeah. scribing or what, but yeah. um, they have an electronic system of scoring that is almost immediate. Yeah. So you see the dog score almost immediately. Yeah. Um, yeah, it was a really well run, clean facility, beautiful facility. Uh, one of the reasons I think, uh, one of the reasons that the gentleman said that they separate their dogs from small on one day and tall on the other day is because of parking. Yeah. Parking was tight. I can see how that would be an issue. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we had a great time, didn't we? had an we? excellent time. I'm so glad that we went. I wish Dottie were here. Why didn't you bring Dottie? <laughs> Where is she? <laughs> she would have loved that course. <laughs> yeah. A lot of running. There lot was of running. a lot of running. I didn't see any dogs shut down. No, everybody was very nice. I didn't see dogs. anybody shut down. I didn't see anybody sniffing. No, I didn't. I didn't see anybody stopping at the top of the A-frame. No. There was um, no lumbering, right? There was, everybody was go, 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 go. I yeah. mean, also, you know, I, I have these, I have, you know, ideas of what I think agility should look like in my head, but we all have to think, you know, you might have a border collie that's insane, but what's it like to live with? Right. It's like, I mean, I'm watching this border collie literally take the dog walk in two and a half strides. And you have to think wow, to yourself. Wait, what? Two okay. And a half? Three strides. Three, right. I would say closer to five. Uh, no way. One, two, one, three, two. maybe four. Yeah. I'll give you four. four. Um, okay, you have a border collie that takes the dog walk in four strides, right? That's a special kind of insanity, 
Right, for yeah. a dog to look at a plank of wood and rubber and say, or, you know, aluminum and rubber and say, yep, I'm going to do that in four strides. Now you have to live with that. Yeah. That eats your couch. They sit on your bed. They go <laughs> dig holes in your yard. Definitely they dig holes in your yard. go counter surfing. But also, you've just won EO. So, which do you want? Yeah. I'd like a medium in there. I'd, I'd like, like to win EO. I'd I think like... I would just have my house be a tip. and I'd be like, <laughs> Let your dog destroy it. Yeah, and I'd be like... Just to be on the podium. And I'd be like, you know what? <laughs> That's the cause of greatness right there. <laughs> oh, man. No, I want a little bit more house dog than I do insanity. Mm. But... Uh, yeah. All right. So, thank you very much, Em. Yeah, that was good. Okay, so if that was you, part two. We're done. Yeah, if you're ever in Europe, go to a dog show. Absolutely. They are fun. So, we went to uh, Derby Dog Sports... Put on by Iconics. Yeah. Iconics, I think, is how they pronounce it. Um, and it was very well run. Yeah. It seemed to me I wasn't running. So yeah. What do I know? But uh, it was very well done. I loved how they had the running order, who was coming up, who had already gone, yeah. what their score was right then and there. Mm-hmm. Uh yeah, really nicely done. Yeah. Impressive course. Yeah, and very well run for a one-ring trial, I thought. They moved quite quickly. I mean, there wasn't any dilly... I can't even dilly say dallying. It. Dilly dallying, right? When dog number one was exiting, dog number two was already set up, running, waiting. Yeah. So. Yeah, yeah. well done. Well done, England. Yeah. <laughs> Bravo to you. Yeah. Proud Maybe I you. should just live here. Golly. It would be a good reason to live here. Yeah. <laughs> I could look past all the uh, tiny roads. Yeah. Our little car did get us there. It did. All right. Thank you. Bye. Love woof, you woof. guys. Bye-bye.